Hey guys, Scary Stories here. I hope you're ready for an absolutely revolting story. And this one's about living next to a cop. Someone who's supposed to protect and serve, right? Well, I think this cop had some other intentions in mind. I hope you enjoy. About seven years ago, my husband and I lived in a nice, older neighborhood built in the 1930s. The homes were very close together, and the neighbors on the street were relatively friendly. We had a sheriff and his wife who lived two doors down from us. My husband had known them a little bit previously, so they'd talk once in a while. The husband always made me feel a little uneasy, though. He was one of those people who would compulsively stare at your chest while he spoke to you. Needless to say, it was very distracting. I hate to admit this, but most of the time, cops make me uneasy. I find it's because they typically have to have certain traits that other people don't. One of them being that they have to pay a bit more attention to you than other people do. It's part of their job, I get it, I understand, but many times their job experience brings a dark side, and I don't like the combination of that dark side and over-intrusive behavior. Anyways, one evening in the summer, we had a sprinkler set up in the backyard to water some of the new grass we planted. My husband was at the gym, and I was upstairs. We had our front door open, but the screen door was shut. I'm in the bathroom at the top of the stairs, and I just hear the screen door open, and some guy say, Hello? There was no knocking or ringing of the doorbell or anything. Just this guy walked in. And I walked to the top of the stairs and still couldn't see anything. We had a circular staircase, so you had to walk halfway down the stairs to see the entryway. So, I walked down the stairs, and the sheriff neighbor is just standing right there. He's at the bottom of the stairs, blocking my way to the front door. He tells me that our sprinkler fell off the pole it was on, and that the hose was just spraying water everywhere straight up into the air. So I said, oh, okay. Let me go outside and fix that. He didn't move, and I sort of had to push past him to get outside. He followed me to my backyard where the sprinkler was, did his usual staring at my chest thing, standing way too close to me the whole time, and eventually after I fixed the sprinkler, he left. Cut to winter. The husband's at the gym again, but this time it's dark outside. I didn't feel well, so I was laying on the sofa in the living room, watching TV. Our living room and the sofa were right next to the entryway where the front door was. We were in the process of doing a lot of housework fixing up the place. We had just finished painting the walls, so we didn't have any curtains up. Anyone on the street could see that I was in there. That's when I hear a knock on the door. I ignore it as I don't answer the door when I'm home alone, not expecting anyone, especially at night. Then I hear a harder knock. And this time the doorbell rings. I still ignore it, but I am aware that whoever it is knows I'm inside. They can see the TVs on, and they probably even saw me on the sofa from the street. I don't care. I still don't answer. Suddenly, the person at the front door starts trying to open it. I hear banging, doorbell ringing. This startled me and got my heart pumping. I got up and grabbed a heavy object with which to protect myself in case whoever it is got in. I was surprised that this was happening because it was a street where there was lots of neighbors and many people walked by. Who'd be trying to break in with all those people out there? Maybe there just wasn't anybody walking tonight. Either way, I felt trapped. I felt like whoever it was could see me standing there through the living room windows. 
or maybe the side windows. There's no curtains, so they were all open. And I picked up the phone and called the police. I hear the person at the front door try and open the door again, and I heard some scratching this time, as well as some kicking. It was as if there was a dog jumping on it, and a man just pounding away at the door. A moment passes, and I hear the screen door shut, and the person appear to walk away. But then I hear them trying to open my side door, just outside the kitchen, which opens up to our driveway. They didn't even try to knock, they just tried to come in. And when that didn't work, there was more banging, more scratching. Thankfully, I had that door locked as well, and I think they just gave up. A few minutes later, two patrol cars showed up, with two officers in each. Two officers knocked on my door right as my husband drove up. He had no idea what was going on, so he talked to one of the officers in the driveway for a moment before coming in, and I explained to him what happened. The officers on my front porch said, Well, there are some footsteps and some dog prints, and they do go out to your driveway and to your side door, and then back out to the sidewalk. And they checked around and said that they couldn't find anything, but that I was smart to call the cops when I did. And they said to call any time, and if he showed up again, don't hesitate. This was so different from how the cops acted where I grew up in Los Angeles, but that's another story. Here's the shady part of all this. My husband tells me it must have been our neighbor, the sheriff. He was outside with his dog when we all drove up. I asked my husband, did he stop and talk to you or the cops? No, he just looked over and went back inside. Now, if you were a cop and you had just innocently come to talk to a neighbor and then saw the cops drive up a few minutes later, wouldn't you go over to see if anything had happened? If you had innocent intentions, knocking on the door trying to get into my house, and then I called the cops because I was scared, wouldn't you come to try and explain what was so urgent that you were trying to get my attention? Cops talk to cops all the time. What was our neighbor up to, and why did he have his dog? The whole thing was just so strange. Thankfully, we moved out of there that spring, so we didn't stick around long enough to find out. And I'd hate to be pulled over by this guy on a dark night. Well, what did you think of that one? Do you think her neighbor was making cookies? Came over to borrow a cup of sugar? Or do you think he might have had some more sinister intentions? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinion on this one. Or just say hi down in the comments. By the way, I mentioned I was going to go see Black Phone the other day. Well, I don't know. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. But it was pretty good. I really enjoyed Ethan Hawke's phone guy, whatever the, uh, oh, the grabber. The bad guy was called the grabber. There's a few things in it that someone a little smarter than me could probably understand or get. Maybe they explained it in the movie and I just didn't catch it. Um, why everybody, well, minor spoilers, I guess. But why the kid could see dead people or ghosts. Ghosts. And, uh... I don't know, I guess the whole black phone. Why does the black phone work? Or how does it work? How does he communicate with ghosts with it? Is it through his sister's dream powers? Is it, does, does he have dream powers too? I don't know. But either way, it was very cool. Maybe somebody who's read the short story or seen the movie could explain that to me. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like. Maybe consider clicking that little red button down below if you haven't already. And if you really like the video, maybe look over to the right. And if you see another one of my videos, click on that one and give it a little watch. It really helps me out. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you're treating yourself well, and I hope you're taking care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.